there. If there's any chord that's associated with jazz, it's probably the major seventh. So you hear people doing stuff like this. When they want to demonstrate the jazz tone of a guitar. Um, suffice to say, a jazz tone of a guitar can be found basically on any electric guitar if you basically have a clean setting and play the strings in the right way and have a little bit of roll off on the tone. Um, but I always do that to demonstrate it. Um, <laughs> I've not come across a guitar that doesn't do that. <laughs> so there you go. So this major seventh chord, I mean, it's kind of where really it's standard group, everybody plays for a major seventh. And I really wanted to talk today about the fact that the major seventh chord is actually a bit, a bit of an odd bird. It's a bit strange. And um, this is something that we can take advantage of um, in order to make music. Um, Oh, it's raining outside now. The rain is coming down. So um, the first thing you've got to know about major seventh is that it's actually not a particularly sound choice sometimes for a um, a sort of major chord. And the time the times where you usually have trouble with it, and I think a few people have spoken about this on the internet, but it's kind of a known thing if you do an arranging course, is if you have the melody note C, for instance, um, and you play under it a C major seventh chord. So for instance, I play you know, and it kind of creates dissonance there. Um, even if I sort of move it away by an octave, um, for instance, I could have this kind of a voicing. Um, can you hear that? It sounds a bit weird. You know, as a major chord, I mean, that, that you know, there's something not quite right about that. And the reason for that is generally put down to the fact that there's this weird interval, the minor second or if you add an octave in it will be a uh, minor ninth you know but which kind of adds this kind of quite strange uncanny or um, non-major quality to the chord on the other hand if you uh, harmonize a um, you know a fifth with it or a seventh sounds good as well. Okay. So it's a strange, it's a strange thing. Um, how it's made up uh, in terms of intervals is that you have this strange interval, then you have two very, very consonant intervals, which are fifths or fourths, depending on how they're inverted. So for instance, in this basic voicing of a major seventh chord, you kind of have a fifth here and a fourth here, and it's separated out. and it starts to sound like something quite interesting, okay? So, the other thing that's problematic about the major seven, which is problematic about all chords which have um, a seventh that sits like a semitone, or any note that sits a semitone away from another note, is that it doesn't invert terribly well. So we, we can invert it, you know, root position, first inversion, second inversion, and then we get to the third inversion, and we have this kind of horrible noise. I say horrible, it's not horrible, that's, that's too much of a value judgment, but it's not, it's not a major chord. It's something else, right? It's a different sound, because we've kind of lost that major quality. So the third inversion major chord is kind of a major seventh chord, it's quite a strange one. You know, it can function really well as a, as a, uh, a substitute for an alter dominant, for instance, you know, in a... So what I'm doing there is I'm just playing like I'm playing it there as a sort of um, almost like a subdominant chord. So I suppose almost like a replacement for um, a D minor seven flat five. But I'm playing like a, a flat over G. As it's really interesting kind of quality to it. Necessarily like um, a bad sound. It's just a sound that isn't major, really. Um, 
So I find that really interesting about it. Um, and, and plus that kind of fourth, fourth C, fifth C sort of quality to the chord makes it quite interesting. Now, this, this is a chord that I hear a lot, you know, from the more recent generation of jazz guitarists, um, really starting with Kurt Rosenwinkel, which is this, this kind of, you know, it's kind of, that kind of sound, right? I can't remember exactly how it goes, but, you know, that, that's a sound that, you know, like actually this sound here, actually a major seventh but it sounds really bizarre it's kind of got this kind of rock pro rock grunge meets jazz weird thing going on you know it's like quite a, quite a weird thing it's, you know because because i mean uh partly because i mean this is just a drop two voicing if you don't know your drop voicings there's drop two and drop three are the majority of most commonly played jazz guitar voicings you like to come across, you know, things like this, you know, or this, or this. You know, that, 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 those very commonplace jazz voicings we all learn when we're getting into um, jazz guitar, you know, they, they usually drop two or drop three, not all of them, but most of them. And this is just a, a second inversion drop two chord played in a low register, but it has this kind of weird, mean quality about it, you know. Um, so in general, if you're doing, uh, if you're learning a chord properly, uh, what a lot of people advise you to do is just to go through all of the possible combinations. There's various ways to do this. For instance, one way is to use the drop system. So for instance, you know, these voicings are all drop twos. Like that, right? You know, these, these voicings, some of them may be familiar, some of them may be not, but you know. Okay, and then the bottom voice, you know, bottom strings. They sound a bit meaner and a bit muddier on this horrible amp that I've got. I can't get the proper amp in soon. But hopefully you can hear that that you know that, that or, or at least see that those voicings are very commonly part of the vernacular of jazz guitar. Then there's the drop threes. Also very common. Perhaps less familiar, or certainly were less familiar to me on these strings. That's a nasty thing to think of sometimes. There you go. So those are those ones. And there's only two of those uh, string groups when you go to the mate, um, uh, when you go to the drop threes. And then there's other things like the splits, as a drop two fours, all that kind of stuff. Um, personally, I find that kind of um, uh, nomenclature, and I'm not going to cover it here because um, you, you can probably find other videos to talk about it. A little bit hard to get my head around. Um, it's quite nice sometimes just to think about the top voice. So it's like, okay, so I've got a seventh here, for instance, you know, the B is a C major seventh. How many ways can I find to harmonize that while keeping all of my, all of the notes of the chord in there? Okay, there's that one, but then there's this one, right? But then maybe I'll take that down an octave, maybe I'll, you know, and then can I even reach that? Probably not. Um, no, that's impossible. Have to do that, right? So <laughs> you, you can find like different, you know, well, there's this one, you know, which just sounds weird. Um, <laughs> uh, but you can find different ways. I mean, that, that's not harmonizing the seventh, that's harmonizing the root. But you can find different ways to, to kind of harmonize a melody, you know. I think that's probably quite a good way to go about it. So it's like, you know, if I've got to harmonize, say, the fifth of the chord, you know, I've got, um, you know, I've got this one, for instance. I've also got this one. down here that's an interesting voicing isn't it you know or maybe if I uh, you know, had the seventh in the bottom it would probably sound horrendous but you know um, so then it would become but then I need, a, I need a root so maybe I'll put the root there and maybe a third there well that's an interesting chord um, but then I could like oh maybe maybe I want um, maybe I want the root to go there but then I can't do that can I because yeah so you, you start to sort of problem solve in a different way. It's a different way of looking at the same thing. There's also the combinations approach, which is what Ben Monda has in his uh, famous uh, PDF document, which I'll try and attach a link to below. It's just it's, it's, uh, three pages of just work, which you could be doing for years, 
just to try and learn the neck properly. Um, I think it's good to systematize your voicings. I personally don't find myself using all of the voicings I come across. You know, I have favorites. I like this one, for instance. It's very clear. That's, this is an interesting voicing, although it's perhaps less useful for comping, right? Oh, sorry, these are two other ways to, it's another way. Split subs, a lot of people like these. I haven't really got into them properly yet. People like them because they are, uh, they've got like a bit of the chord down here, and then the melody stands proud of it. Pasquale uses a Pasquale Grasso uses a lot of these. Margie uh, Lund seems to as well. You know, uh, it's good to have a separation between the chord and the melody. So, just to take you quickly through that, explain what's going on here. Basically, um, if you look, I've got the third, the fifth, and the one going on down here. I put the seventh over the top there. Right, and then for this chord, which is another inversion of the same, the same structure. I just have a, you know, a little shell voicing and I've got the fifth on top like that, which is really nice. So it makes the melody stand out, you know. It's a nice register thing, you know, same. Uh, I should probably think of a, uh, a second inversion one, which would be that. It's kind of a bit awkward though, because it's the root. So I probably wouldn't use that one. So it's like, it's not that I, take every chord and, and try to apply it to every tune because a lot of them just don't sound very good to me. But you know, like this one sounds great, especially as an ending chord, or you know, if I want to sort of kind of make it sound really mean. Get that Kurt Rosenwinkel sound, that's a great voicing. This is a great one, you know. It's got a Joni Mitchell-esque quality to it. Um, this one is uh, doubling the, uh, the root. seventh and you've got that clash there which you know technically isn't a good thing to do for arranging but you know you might like the way it sounds for instance Jonathan Christberg writes the way that sounds um, you know you've got all these voicings um, that you can use in the major seventh but not all of them are going to be equally appealing to you and that's part of the fun you know you should go through this process of crunching through all the voicings and just find a few voicings that you like the other thing is obviously voice leading you know for instance um, drop threes and drop twos lead well into each other. If I'm playing, for instance, G major going to C major seventh, G major seventh that is. Very obviously, you know, that's a, a probably a combination that you've played loads, but then maybe in the next inversion, it's interesting to go like that maybe, or going up to the next one, it's like this. Um, so you don't hear that one quite so often, you know? So, like, you can take these things and abstract them. Uh, it's like maybe, I don't know. Um... So what I wanted to finish with is uh, just to talk about this rather cool way of conceptualising a major seventh arpeggio, not as the usual kind of thing, but actually thinking about it in terms of being uh, an intervallic structure. So in this case, two perfect fifths separated by a major third. For instance, or if it's C. Like that. It's quite it's quite a nice way. You can kind of come up with different sort of colours, I think, playing like that. So, you know, um, That's a bit cooler than you would normally play on a sort of major seventh, isn't it? And I mean, it also works for a minor seventh. The only difference is on a minor seventh, it's no longer a major third, it's a minor third. Like that, right? Or. So, this is kind of a different sound that you can get from very familiar chords. Um, and if you invert the fourth, even, even that, which is a completely conventional chord grip. Has a 
different kind of quality to it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you find that interesting, and let me know any comments below.